<laughs> what episode is it? Twelve in the seventies, seven. For real? Yeah. Man, we itching, we itching up on a honey real, real bad, man. A honey, right up the street. I see it. All right, what's up, YouTube? Welcome to episode 77 of Hippies and Pants. 78, 78, 78, 78. 78? Yeah, 78. You, you the one that got to do the editing. <laughs> Welcome to episode 78 of Hippies and Pancakes. As usual, I got D with me. And I got Q ways with me. What's going on? What's going on? <clears throat> Mute, bro. Yeah. I'm about to say, uh, but back to what we was talking about, bro. Yeah, bro. I ain't gonna lie, bro. Why I be a contender this year, bro? The year not over yet, though. That's why I can't say. But J Cole is is like automatic. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It just like automatic when he dropped. It's it's just like Jay Z dropping. Like, do you expect Jay Z not to do that, motherfucker? And you gotta wait, Kend- Kendrick. I- Once Kendrick drop, then we get the turn. Look how excited I am for Kendrick Lamar. Come on, man. You look, I, look. You make that face now, but once it dropped, on with it, man. You was right, man. Kendrick the king. He the goat. I ain't gonna say that. I'm just saying, bro. Like, man, bro. Like, first of all, the all season is not even what the fuck we was waiting for from J Cole. We was waiting for the fall off. Yeah. The all season just came out of nowhere. <laughs> That's it, did. Yeah. So I ain't even hearing that. That we definitely. I, I don't know about other fans. I thought the fall off was. Mm. Mm. I just can't get excited about a ghost. A ghost? <laughs> yeah, bro. I can't get excited about a ghost, bro. I'm sorry, bro. Like, and K dot my guy, bro. But it's like, bro, I can't, bro. Yeah, take a mental break. I mean, I feel it. I'm, bro, I'm all for it, bro. I'm all for it, bro. Damn, you ain't had no, no sneaky shit in the cut that you already recorded that you could have dropped for us aside for the wait. Yeah. That's one thing. You, we don't get a lot of mixtapes no more from rappers. That's what it, bro. Even Wayne, bro. Like, bro, go back to the mixtape easy, bro. Fuck these niggas, bro. Like, I, honestly, I never like album Weezy. I, I only album Weezy I like was maybe Carter Three. Carter Three, that's it. You like Carter Two? Nah. Bro, I, I ain't really, bro. I ain't really locking with Wayne to like. I ain't really locking with Wayne to like Carter Two. Honestly, bro. And anybody that be trying to act like they've been with Wayne since the beginning, you you just got a shitty ear for music. Cause that boy was ass when he first came out, bro. Nah, he wasn't ass. He, he was not better. Lil Wayne that we got today, bro. Nah, the black side wasn't cool. Uh, it just he had that squad up there. It was it wasn't the last. But after squad up, you know, he got with Gilly in the Man, rest when, of history. Whenever that nigga picked that cup up is when he turned up. Nah, before the cup, man. The the uh the uh well, we we had this conversation. What was the next tape? Uh, the DJ Drama Junk, that series. Dedication. The dedication. Yeah, the dedication for the dedication series. Because it was the dedication was, in the Carters, huh? I thought he was already fucking with the lean and shit with that. Because I'm going to tell you, when, when when I really first, first, first turned on the Wayne, it was, uh, it was Go DJ, bro. I ain't even going to lie. I like I knew Lil yeah, Wayne. Kinda, I grew I, I grew up with Lil Wayne. You feel me? I remember Lil Wayne when back when I was little and he was little Wayne. He was rapping and shit, but like he wasn't as effective or forcing to bro. The nigga, even when you when I go back and listen to the Carter, I'm like, I'm like, bro, I know, I know Tunchy can beat this nigga Wayne. Like Carter One Wayne. Carter One Wayne wasn't hitting on nothing for real. Carter wasn't that bad. Carter was good. It, it, no, I'm not. I'm not even saying that they bad albums. I'm just saying in comparison to skill and like, you know, like this nigga Wayne, bro. This nigga it, rappers wasn't using one word punchliners like that. Wayne put these niggas on that, bro. You know what I'm saying? Um, Guns turn you boys into pussies. Sex change. 
No, no. Duh. I was about to say this the same. I think it's the same argument that Ludacris had. Nah, nah. It's this probably the first person you heard that did that. But that's a flow because that's why Ludacris was beefing with Drake and Wayne because of the same uh, flow. Because he stopped doing it, then Drake stopped doing it. it was like, uh, the, uh, and then Nicki Minaj commented on man, what do they call the punchline? Uh. That 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 flow you, that you talking about? But they call one the word punch, they call one word punchlines, bro. It's when you say a bunch of shit and it, and, but at the end it's one thing that connects the whole thing you just said. Yeah, well, Wayne ain't the first nigga to do that. <laughs> and bro, then, Wayne got Wayne is the but, nigga that took rap, bro. I'm bro, it's niggas not. I'm it, it's other rappers. I'm not gonna. I'm not talking about the Jada kisses and stuff. Like to me, Jada kiss still underground. Like Jada Kiss didn't he ain't he ain't like industry like that. You know what I'm saying? He really rap. I'm talking about Wheezy, bro. This nigga, come on, bro. We can do this all day. This can be a hundred episodes of Wayne, bro. That's that's my nigga, bro. <laughs> he wasn't but, the first one, though, but no, he he might have uh repopularized it and it got bigger than it ever got before. You can say, yeah, we can say that. He might have made it more popular than it ever was. Just like, you know, but, but uh, who, that's who, not who, who, who could deliver you a song, bro? Really, uh, man, I, I don't, I ain't about to argue with you, bro. Lil Wayne gave us songs with damn near every line was a punch line, bro. If you listen to shit like I'm me. Nah, Lil Wayne the man. I'm not, I, that's not what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. He just wasn't the first to do it, is all I'm yeah. saying. Like, he, like, he did, he did it better and he, he like did it like Tom Brady. Tom Brady wasn't the first great, great quarterback, but he did that better than everybody else before him. So he became like Lil Wayne. When he caught a one, he started the ascension. By the caught a two is when he started saying he was the best rapper alive. But between the caught a two and the caught a three, when he dropped all the mixtapes, that's when he became the best rapper alive. But he, he, he knew, he knew with, something uh, though. Uh, he said it, he said it in the song. He said, and to think I'm just one sellout record from being famous. Like he said it right before, uh, and that's, all, and that's, this is the gangsters don't die. They get chubby and move to Miami. Bitch, I'm in Miami. Like I'm telling you, and in that song, he's like, and to think I'm one sellout song before being famous. And then he dropped Lollipop right after that. That shit popped him off to Lil Wayne, the greatest rapper ever. And he kept that shit running. But it was between the Carter 2 and the Carter 3 where he really stamped that shit down that he's the best. And he dropped all them motherfucking mixtapes. And I got all of them motherfuckers. It was, I'm telling you, it was that. It's like, maybe like a five year period, I've heard every word that he rapped. So, yeah, I don't know. So, who you think a better who you think a better rapper between Wheezy and Drake? Um, uh, uh, Wayne, a better just pure rapper, Wayne. Yeah, but I like, think so. Like uh, Drake, he be like you know he his his you can under I can understand what Drake says a little bit more, so it's a little bit more palatable. But easier. I think that's the beauty of, of I think that's the beauty of Wayne though, because like you can kind of listen to a Drake album, even though it be I'm about to say, but that's the beauty of Wayne though, because like you can listen to a Drake album and kind of catch the gist of everything. Like I ain't gonna lie, like I don't go back to old. Like I, I still listen to views. You feel what I'm saying? Uh-huh. And like when I go through and listen to, like, cause I, I've, I've literally studied and mastered take care of shit. You feel me? But like uh-huh. views, it still lines in there that I'm dissecting. And then even in this new joint, like, and, 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 and no, the new joint kind of like, in my mind, any music that drop from here for the next, I want to say three, three to five years is going to be niggas in recovery and relying solely on the 2020 reset to sell. You know what I'm okay. saying? Cause like, cause I don't, I think we got to move out of this because like 
it wasn't just the working class that was out of work. Them rappers was sitting at home too. Yeah. And 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 a nigga can't you can't you ain't do too much sliding on quarantine, huh? You know what I'm saying? You, you ain't do too much running up. It's not that many rappers that can really say they honestly made a bag through the through the virus. Only rip only nigga. And I think that's why they try to they try to stop him. Only nigga that really made a bag was the baby. Man, all the rappers that was getting paid during COVID, they shut down. Pooh Shiesty, uh, fucking other than Money Bag Yo, fucking all the all the rappers that were blowing up. The new rappers they shut down. Ain't no new rap. What new Money rapper? Bag. Up? Go ahead. Money. Oh no, nah, Money Bag. Is 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 a rare case of a rapper that he can really rap. Don't get me fucked up. He can rap, but he has this unique ability to take some current shit and make it a hit. Like every time, like the uh, like the it's the it's the blank for me. It's the this for me. You know what I'm saying? Like even. Like, like I don't know, like that nigga, he know how to keep the trends in his music. So it's like his shit kind of low key, a little dated because if you listen to it, you can remember, you can catch what era we was in. Like, you know what I'm talking about? Yeah. He, def- he definitely, he definitely gifted though. He definitely got a gift for that, a knack for that shit to be able to catch some skill on the internet and turn it into something. Uh, should I fuck right here? You can pull it. I was pulling it down. Right. But um AQ. Yeah. Uh all the posts that I was sending. Oh yeah, they said the rock, the rock made his rap debut, y'all. He on Tech Nine album. I didn't hear yet. I heard about it though. You heard? Yeah, I might I'm gonna go listen to the song, but I don't think it's gonna be nothing tight. It's just the rock. <laughs> in my mind, in my mind, I'm expecting his verse to sound like Shaq on the track right now, honestly. Yeah, you gotta think Rock is one of the most popular people out in the world, man. No, but hands down, like no, no funny as far as me. If 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 I was to get any feature, like all hand, if I was to get any cool feature, and this aside from like Jay-Z, Drake, Lil Wayne and shit, if I was to get anybody on a song for a feature, I would use Shaquille O'Neal or Dame or Dame Dollar. Dang dollar, yeah. Mm-hmm. I love that nigga, bro. That nigga can really rap, bro. Yeah, he can rap. He can really, no, he can he can really make music. Yeah. Like, like, bro. I like I sit in here all day, bro. You see me? I say I show you the shit that I do, bro. I know the process that it takes to make a song, like, and, and and the pressure that you feel that to even build these songs to make them last for three minutes and it's complete, bro. And they can rap, but I use, but that's clever for him to use the rock though. Yeah. I guarantee, I guarantee you all the strength, all the strength that the rock on that jump is gonna do numbers. This just because you know what I'm saying? Like just because I put John Cena on the song too. Have you heard it? No, I ain't hear the bitch yet. I don't think oh. that it, I'm not expecting like quality, like like a quality verse or anything. <laughs> <laughs> That, like that's why I even say it's Shaq. Like I wouldn't like don't expect no bomb. I, I when you expect certain rappers like niggas that don't rap to get on songs, expect lyrics. Don't expect more than lyrics. You know what I'm saying? Like if you get more than lyrics, damn, this nigga can. I ain't know he had that talent, but for the most part, I'm look, I'm just looking like at the very least, Shaquille, uh, Dwayne Johnson gonna give us fucking. He gonna give us some lyrics, like it's gonna be lyrical. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But I think the delivery is still gonna be. Do you smell what the rock is cooking? Hmm. Like that's just that's just it. I was telling your brother, man. D, I said young boy might got album. Yeah, man. He just dropped the album with no features on that bitch. And he yeah. and he the third rapper to go number one from jail. I I just hope he I hope he gets out of jail. They uh, get a full they, said, they said his her, his petition got like a hundred twenty five thousand or some uh signatures. Hey, you can't petition them. <laughs> I wish a motherfucker. Uh, I, I wish you could just petition your way out of uh, a prison. But no, nah, uh, I ain't saying you can. I mean, Loon did it. He did. 
Yeah, bro, I signed loans petition, my nigga. I swear, I swear my right hand to God by a law, bro. I signed loans petition, bro. My on, on change.org, bro. I signed his petition myself. And loan just got out. Yeah, he got out last year, right? Yeah, he just got out. Either last year or earlier this year. Yeah. I don't know. Like, I mean... bro, just bro, just got out. You know, he was gone. Loon from Bad Boy was gone. <laughs> nah. <laughs> He was, uh, what, what was he in jail for? Uh, I think it was some fraud shit or something like that. Oh my god! He Muslim now though. He 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 on all Islamic stuff now though. No. He he on he don't be like on rap on that. Oh okay. But he, you know, you know, once you, you know, I, one thing about hip hop is we don't give enough credit to because we we get killed in this shit. Like we don't consider a nigga a legend in hip hop till they die. And yeah. I think I think that's a narrative that got changed. Like Jay Z, a living legend, bro. Jay Z, Jay Z was here with Tupac and Biggie. I mean, it's certain legends that we have, but it's like King Von is a legend now. Pop he a, le- is he a, a legend, legend now. now. He a, he, but he a legend now. But you know, Chicago's drill scene. Only go back to like 2012, right? Yeah, exactly. Something like that. Yeah. When did Sosa? When did Sosa? Because Sosa is the first one from the shot to get on as far as drill. It was rappers. If we had Lupe, Common, fucking Kanye, I mean, but they wasn't. They, I don't think that they were. Uh, they made me think Chicago was like barbershop. When. Sosa and them came and Dirk and Reese and all them came. I was like, damn, they kidding like that, dude? Like, that shit sound like Southeast. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But but when Common and them rap don't, in your mind, you don't get painted a picture. Like, every time Common and them rap, I think of, I think of Chicago being an episode of the Chappelle show when Common and them rapping on the roof. That's what I think about Chicago when I heard them niggas. Mm-hmm. I didn't even think about, I, and then you, I think we got Lupe Fiasco. So I'm like, damn, nigga, skateboarding through Chicago, they ain't, they ain't you no know, sliding. I ain't even thinking about that. But then, when the new, when the new news frequency popped up, and these other rappers, you know, like like King Von said, when Sosa got on, that's when the war went viral against the GDs and the BDs. You feel what I'm saying? And that's how yeah. we get so much information about, cause bro, only gangs that was prevalent in rap was Blood and Crip. Yeah, that's been mentioned. And when you say in rap, by being put in songs and stuff, yeah, that, it's even yeah. being sold. It's even being sold. When you, I was, I, I'm not gonna hold you. When Weezy was hot, I'm gonna wear me some red. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm going, and him and Jewels, they all, all of them, they, you know what I'm saying? Like it was, it was called. It's cultural influences, even like, cause I'm not, I'm not from a gang culture but i was fascinated by it so the first taste i was getting it, getting it of gang life was blood and crip you feel what i'm saying i grew up watching all the south centrals and boys in the hoods and shit so this is shit I, i'm like i like you know what i'm saying like i ain't want i ain't necessarily like wasn't drawn to it to where i wanted to be a part of it like i wanted to die for that shit it just was like it fascinated me you know what i'm saying mm-hmm. But I wouldn't have got that information from if, if DC rappers would have been popping. I wouldn't have got that blood and crip information. It would have been, I don't know what the fuck niggas would have been rapping about. Shooting at the go-go, banging a street, selling crack to their grandmother, like the real shit that going in the hood, but how would they have said it? But like, nah, we definitely like, you. I, I don't know, like, I, and, and niggas can correct me if I'm wrong. This is my podcast, nigga. You can comment under this junk. You can come on the episode and talk about it. But I can't consider Pop Smoke to be a legend. Pop Smoke is definitely a legend. I can't. I can't. I, I don't. I can't. I, you gotta have that conversation with me and, and, and explain to Pop, me how. Like Pop Smoke got his own day. So that make him a legend. In in his city, he is. You going no, to take look? No, I get it. I'm saying rap though, like. Yeah, oh, he was on the up, just like King Von. Like, if, if you die and you hot, you always hot. You can't lose your hot. You know what I'm saying? You you good. You a legend. Yeah. Like Biggie. He died early. Yeah, when you got He's, that upward trajectory. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, yeah. All right, now right. see, see, that's why I said just had a conversation with me and give me some perspective. I can see that because yeah, you right with Biggie, but yeah, because it ain't even like Tupac. You know, you know, when you first get introduced to rap, I was only thinking it was like ten or fifteen rappers. I ain't even know even Gilly. Like, bro, I miss Gilly whole rap career, bro. Like when he talks about it, in my mind, I'm the fan of Gilly, the host of his podcast and the personality. I don't even. I don't know not one Gilly line. See, <laughs> the thing about rap that then and now that people really don't understand, that shit used to be really controlled. Whereas but this you, the, this you the know. deal though. Every, I understand that conversation. Like niggas, niggas wouldn't have been able to get put on the forefront, but you got Jay Z is the one that everybody told this nigga no. Like, they did not believe in Jay. Jay believed yeah, in Jay. But Jay had the but Jay had the resources Facts. to back it up. Facts. And a lot of these rappers that have gotten on now would never have gotten on now because they would have never gotten a meeting. They would have never, you know what I'm saying? Like, and that's why a lot of it is what it is. Like, it's the accessibility to the art form that not not to the you know you create the art but now you can get it to the world without going through a middleman and, and so now a lot of these uh platforms they are acting like the middleman that's why I like facebook is an apple and all these they're, they're trying to they, they are not trying they're starting their own record labels and signing people and get because truthfully you don't need them but like, that's what I'm saying. Gilly and uh, so many other rappers that if they would have came out now, wouldn't have been able to have been stopped in silence. But because of when they came out, they were able to be stopped in silence. And, oh, we're not, we not going to put your album out. You know what I'm saying? And you don't have money to get uh, CDs pressed. What you going to do? You know what I'm saying? Like, you can't get on the shelf into the store. What you gonna do? That's why they literally call it being shelved. They were shelved artists for years. And that's why it was so much uh, politics with the record label, because you would have to appease these people in order to just get the junks printed. But they, it, a lot of it now is uh, the transition, because and that's what Kanye was beefing about, because you're still getting charged with, with, with record deals. Uh, a lot of people are still getting charged for stuff that d just doesn't happen uh, now. Like, you get charged for breakage. Um, but what you breaking? Because it ain't no CDs. You know what I mean? Stuff like they, that. But that's what they, they, they made that charge, though. That change happened. See, a lot of people don't remember the shift and why Kanye West so important to rap, bro. Because they don't remember when Magna Carta dropped and when all that was going on. With with they with Jay Z and Ye was standing for at the time, like they made it. They made it so you niggas. So so not you niggas. I'm gonna say me too, cause cause I I receive revenue from the streams too. They make it so we you can you you receive the revenue from the streams and shit for this so this shit can count. Remember Jay sold a million uh copies the Samsung before the album dropped, but they right. but, but they didn't they didn't certify his own platinum, right. Right, because he sold it, and then they sold the, they put it on the uh, phones that they released. Yeah, they said, oh yeah, if you get this new Galaxy, you can you can have uh, access early access to Magna Carta Holy Grail already on the phone. Right, but the uh, YouTube did that though first, and they counted this, uh, YouTube uh, with the Apple something, and they had the commercial. Like if you remember, think back in the day with the when they had the Apple and they were still doing the colors with the uh the white earphones for the Apple uh, headset. Mm -hmm. And you two did it, then Jay Z did it, but they was like, "How come you two is platinum, but then I'm not?" And I did the same thing. Right. You know, you know what I'm saying? That's when it's the rules and how everything is counted. That, Cause that's why that. That's what that that's what that's how important leverage is though, because niggas like Jay can tell a motherfucker, well, you know what? See, Jay-Z so bossed up, he can say, man, I'm trying to pull my shit off for you. I don't want my shit on y'all shit right here. I'm gonna put my shit on my own shit. Cause title right. just is title just is booming as Spotify. It's 
You know what I'm saying? It's like the big three of streaming uh, platforms. Yeah. Um, you know but that, that, that was a big point of it. And if he could have gotten, um, if, if ever they could get, if we could get, um, what is it, Unity or like artists working together, they have the control, the leverage. You have the leverage, but you got to be willing to utilize it. Like, like an artist union? Something like that, yeah. Like, I mean, and it's it's not unheard of. Like, there there are artist unions. There are plenty of can them. There. Can you see? Can you see that happening with hip hop? Or do you could because I think that the newer structure. I, I I say that I'm gonna add this so you can have a, answer my question better. I see that with the newer structure it is a lot of artists are choosing to remain independent because yeah we you we can don't still be need, in a union. We don't really need big machines to get this shit moving. We it's more so getting heard and being in the right place in the right time or pay, or just paying the right bill. Mm-hmm. But you know see, what I'm the, saying? Like, see the, the, the thing about a union is, is where people, a lot of people don't understand is you don't have to work with the person to be unionized. Like it's all kinds of, it's farmer cooperatives. There right. are all kinds of different trade groups. Like an artist, it, you treat it just like a freaking welder's trade and have a welder's union and, and set the price for anybody who needs welder's work. Or if you are welding, you're paying your dues, then you're going to get these benefits, regardless of where, you know, saying you work and you can have retirement and these things. And then you can have the contracts be structured in a way based upon your, your collective bargaining. That's what the union is used to do is to bargain collectively for everybody's benefit. It ain't, oh, I got to work with you. I got to, no, it's we're going to collectively say anybody who does this and pays these fees and are part of our group, our trade, our whatever, they're going to have certain protections because we're paying into it. That's what it's supposed to be like. But a lot of people, you know, they don't know nothing about that. So whatever. Right. It is what it is. <laughs> it is what it is, man. But but yeah, it definitely could be a uh, artist union uh, or a rap union. Um, it could be done organized. Like I think it has been some people who tried to organize it. But um, do you have any prominent members? Do you have anybody promoting it? You know, recruiting more members, and then uh, what are they willing to do to uh get compliance? You know what I mean? Are you gonna? not work with these venues if you're not giving certain accommodations or you're not paying on, on these certain times like you can make promoters like a, a artist union can make all the promoters in order to book any of these artists they have to go through their booking system so they make sure they are paid on time and they don't get jerked on the back end or something like that that's right. how it should work to, to we're going to bargain or e- collectively or even, or even be able to protect them with let's say like if they can't if they flight get delayed and they don't make a show because a lot of these niggas a promoter put a bad rap on the artist because the artist can't make it not realizing that the artist is just a person like motherfucker gotta go through TSA just like everybody else you know what I'm saying right. do shit just do shit just like everybody else so yeah I can see that being a thing I don't I don't I don't I don't know like maybe that's that's maybe it's like a rap secret society we don't know about now. That's not Illuminati. Well, there are definitely more. Uh, there are people who uh, work together and meet up and have their own uh, plans and hopes and dreams. I mean, it's people that do it publicly. Like, it's it's people that are prominent that are you making the rock changes. the Rock brunch? Yeah, but I'm just saying, there are changes being made. We can't sit here and act like things are just as, as total status quo like it's always been their change is incremental and we just got to keep it going and people have to realize that you have the power don't give it up like harness these new technologies you know what i'm saying and direct them to something that you do own that that that, that you can make your own revenue through because right. again it's all about you know controlling the long term money. That's what they that's why why you think it's just like uh 
like a uh, casino. They are, they are, you go to a casino, you stay in there, they be like, you want to put some money on your room? Hell mm-hmm. yeah, go ahead. You know, because you, you got your card on. Go ahead. You, you want some chips? Put it in your room. No problem. We're going to get that back in. It's all about the back end. Right. Hey, Q, yeah. what you have for us, though? Uh, what about to talk about? I'm trying to think. Um, yeah, that post you was talking about with the uh, the cop. The one they got acquitted. I yeah. mean, the one they said they not gonna uh, they not gonna pursue charges. Yeah. What was the guy's name? I uh, I, I remember, but I, I'm, it slipped my mind right now. I know it's like Jacob. Jacob Blake. Yeah, Jacob Blake. Remember that when we when we talked about that D Jacob Blake. The guy that got shot. Uh, he broke up the fight and they got shot in front of his kids. His back. Got shot in the back. He paralyzed too. Yeah. Oh. And yeah. they're not going to pursue charges against uh, the officer who did that. Nope. Nope. But what happened? Yep, that's what they said. They ain't um, going to pursue no charges. <laughs> I think that's uh, I think that's crazy, man. Like I think that anytime that a human does something, you know, I I've been noticing, right? I watch y'all. Do y'all watch uh like old western movies, like country western movies and shit? Nah. Yeah, yeah y'all I have, I I have seen, seen some. I, so I, I'm into that. Like I'm really into that. I'm really into. I like western movies and shit, right? Like old country westerns. I like them more when it's black people in them that's doing some cool cowboy shit. But anyway, that's another conversation, and we could talk about that too. But. Uh, I watch uh, the movie Tombstone, right? And it just kind of like a lot of the stuff in these old Western movies have some historical backing. You know what I'm saying? As far as like Boom Towns, if you understand Boom Towns and the Gold Rush, and, uh, and even the slave trade, different things like that. If you understand uh, different things and you understand history, I notice how like when they were setting up these towns, they real life you can real life shoot a nigga. And the sheriff ain't going to lock you up. He's going to take your gun. Not you, because maybe not a black person, but like, you know, he a citizen. He'll take their gun and they'll wait like a trial. And you can real life get away with shooting a nigga for accusing you of being a liar without proof. And it goes to show like how, you know, the rules in this country, how this shit all set up. You know what I'm saying? Like, these motherfuckers, no one knows what the fuck they doing. Like, at the end of the day, like, you can literally, if if you present this case and don't talk about this one, you can get off of murder. You know what I'm saying? Because you right. didn't talk about this case law or no one brought this up, so you don't talk about it either. Because, like, if he if you would have shot him and he would have killed him, I mean, because at the end of the day, that's assault, bro. That's assault with a deadly weapon. That's attempted murder. Like that man paralyzed for the rest of his life. I mean, I, I guess criminally is that's one, I, I, and that's another thing that we look into. This like criminally, okay, he not getting charged. So I guess civilly he can go in and he can be found guilty civilly because he did this charge as filed. Yeah. But mm-hmm. this the whole thing. If they decide when they decided not to convict him criminally that kind of weakens a civil case. And a lot of people don't be knowing that because they was like, well, shoot, they ain't had no basis to convict them on, on X, Y, or Z anyway. Unless well, I mean, you go. Good. No, I just say, it could just be like OJ, you know, if you present an off, uh, 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 the, the- That still ain't gonna bring nothing back though. That dude need to go to fuck the jail. Like you shot that nigga, he ain't even, do, he didn't do that. Like you could have tased him is what I'm saying. You feel me? Like you could have tased him. Like, what if he was already walking away and if he felt like he ain't had he reached in the car and he going to the car to get something, stop yeah. him with the taser. I'm just saying, don't do that. I understand. Listen, listen, I said this when we talked about it initially. I'm not trying to defend the officer in no way, shape, form, or fashion, but we got to make sure we keep ourselves in best position where. Bro, it can't be at, any man. I'm I'm gonna say this as a person, as a person who's been in situation with these people and who's confronted. That's what I'm people. saying it as. I'm a, I'm no, nah, I'm saying it like like for the viewers and, and, and shit. Like 
I say this. When you out here and you realize how powerless you are, even to where the law ain't going to protect you, and you realize that the law won't protect you because the law don't exist. It's not tangible. It's not no, It's not nothing. You know what I'm saying? Uh-huh. It just it's, it's it's nothing. It's it, it's 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 the same as your covenant with God. You know what I'm saying? You can say that you believe in God, but like if you don't honor that covenant sincerely and, and, and for real, then it don't really mean nothing. It, Cause it's not really a tangible thing. It's more so just the you know it's a um it's a code of conduct. It's, it's you having integrity. You you feel what I'm saying? And I feel like. I feel like the lack of integrity, cause like, what the fuck did the, do the do the officer like? Yeah, man, my fault for shooting you in your fucking back though. Did the nigga motherfucking apologize? Like, yeah, bro, I realized you wasn't doing nothing. You broke up a fight or whatever the case was. You made and, and I did this in front of your kids. Sorry, I, I traumatized your fucking kids that seen me do this shit to you. You know what I'm saying? Like, it be. It be the it be the big it be the big picture in it, it the big picture shit that really be bothering me with this shit for real for real because like at the end of the day you as a person should be able to feel safe within your person like bro if you don't want to let let them in your car because you don't feel safe they can break your windows and pull you out like bro wait chill you know what I'm saying like chill like they be treating they treat the situation where they think it's a gun. Like it's a gun there. And in the situation when it's a gun there, they treat that situation like they think it's a gun. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I feel like, you. I feel you. But I, like as a person who has, has multiple police officers put their gun in my motherfucking face, I'm going to say, I'm not saying what the fucking officer did was right. But I'm just saying when the officer is wrong, we got to move right so that shit won't, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, because I I promise you, motherfucker screaming and shaking the gun in my face. Like, I'm not right. going to fucking buck at it. I'm like, I, literally what I said, I said, don't shoot me, bro. I said, what's the problem? And talk to him. Like, look, you need to fucking come back to reality. What's going on right now? You know what I'm yeah, saying? Really? Like, yo, like, cause I'm not going to say, I'm not going to believe in, oh, I, even though I know I ain't did nothing wrong, I'm going to believe in that's going to protect me. You feel yeah. me? Like, I, I got to be uh, cognizant enough of the situation because I don't know what they got going on in their household. And I don't want my family to miss me because this person got had a fucked up day or ain't getting no pussy last night from his wife. You know what right. I'm saying? Like, look, bro, we going to figure this out. What you need me to do? You got your gun out? All right, because you're not about to make me a statistic and then we got to explain this and then all the value that I bring to my family is just gone. And we got to fight for years to possibly get some type of uh, uh, reckon, uh, reckon, uh, pence for for my life which can't never be a value be placed on. You feel me? So that's why I'm like, I, I know they be wrong. <laughs> I know they be wrong, but you still have to make sure you're moving to give yourself the highest odds of getting out of that situation alive. Because they killing us and they and just like you, and they not even being uh, held accountable criminally for it. You right. know? So, that's all. I mean, shit, man. <laughs> I don't know. I just wish, I wish it was something other than trying to take him to court and getting people to agree with you that they were wrong. Cause I think he go, they're going to get money. They had enough media coverage. That they're going to have a lot that he was going to get paid. But did that give you back your life? Like, would you give up your legs for millions of dollars? I'm, yeah, not, nice. I'm like, I don't think so. Uh, I take, I take um, legs. Yeah. Like, cause I'm planning on getting my M's is they come in already, you know? So like, yeah, you know, so it's it's just you can't truly compensate that. You can never truly compensate the loss of someone's health. You can never truly compensate the loss of someone's life. So you get, you know, uh, 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 for the people who have been uh, the ones victimized for uh, uh, unjustly, you sh we still got to move in a way like if, if people was out there catching slaves again tomorrow, 
we can't say, oh, oh, well, they shouldn't be catching slaves. You better move right so they don't grab your ass. Nah, for real. You know what I'm saying? Like you, 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 you can't. You, you, you ain't got time to be. I already got my contingency plan for if they ever try to just think they was gonna put niggas back on plantations like flat out like that. That's just gonna be law. I already knew. I said, my man, Nat Turner. That's it. I was just like, Nat Turner. That's it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you gotta get active real quick. And, it's like, and that, but that, it, and you can't be reactive either. You gotta real life be on. That's why. That's why a lot of motherfuckers like. When I be seeing that shit that like that that's going on, like in the situation that bro was in, I learned to be more conscious of what I put myself in. Like I be wanting to, it be like, it be feeling like my duty to want to stop every time I see the police got surrounding the nigga and doing something. Cause it's like you kind of want to watch and make sure they doing their fucking job. But then it's like they be finding a way to drag you in this shit. Oh yeah, you know yeah. what I'm saying and and. and <laughs> And it, you know, it'd it be crazy because like everybody don't have it. I went, I don't like to use luck, but everybody, you know, for conversational purposes, everybody don't be having the same luck when they come down to um, encountering law enforcement. You know what I'm saying? Because like me, I'm a student of the law. They see me, they wouldn't see that. You know what I'm saying? They people wouldn't watching see what? This, people, they wouldn't see that I'm a student of the law. They wouldn't, they wouldn't even think in their mind that I will go and research any law. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Whether it be on the constitutional level, the local, federal level, whatever, like they wouldn't think that I would go and understand statutes and all these things. They, they wouldn't think that of me. But I feel like, let's say, maybe even my dad, cause I can't necessarily say my dad, but my dad maybe got a different look and he older, so like, they may try to perceive him as less of a threat than myself. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't know. Mm -hmm. They always, they, it's, it's like, it's, it's, it's just like, I, I try not to be like this, but I feel like it's, it's trained to be in them. So what training do we have? We don't get no training when it comes to dealing with police. They got training when it comes to encountering us. You know what I'm saying? And they train it to treat us like, everybody like a threat until they can perceive that they're not a threat. Right. And that's why I'm saying like you, if you're going to be a, if you, if you know, that's true, then you have to present yourself to them as the least threatening as possible. Fuck what they think. Like, just get out the situation. But you, you know the thing about that though, you never know what scares a person though. Cause sometimes it don't be how you look, it don't even be how you talk. It be it can be some shit that you know, and a motherfucker will be like, "Dang, man, you can't look. You can't be to certain people. You can't be too bad. You can't be too good. If you dress like you a bum, they gonna think you up to no good. If you dress like you you got a million dollars, they gonna be like, how'd you get that million dollars? Like why you look so good." You know what I'm saying? I, I'm telling you, I know. But it's like you just gotta move accordingly. You gotta you gotta be like I I don't quote the law to the police because again, especially if they harassing you, they breaking the law any fucking way. So it's Not like true. it ain't about to be like, oh, you can't do that. Like when a month when the motherfuckers already violating, they were like, oh, oh watch no. me. Once one thing I learned about the police. And my encounters with them, and this for anybody that may encounter the police. My first right that I think about is is um is my fucking uh, Fourth Amendment right when it comes to encountering the police is illegal searches and seizures. If they automatically off rip violate my legal uh my I mean my Fourth Amendment right to protect me against illegal search and seizures. I don't say nothing. I will be ready for jail. I'm I'm ready to see the judge and the cell. I'm like, just take me. That's to the what cell. I'm saying. That's yeah. what I'm saying. I'm like, you gotta know how to move to get out of this shit because that probably is gonna be the fastest way to get out of that situation. Yeah. Cause it's like, you, cause, cause certain niggas do shit and pile it up. Then they they yeah. end up, they end up having a 
possession of marijuana charge right there, they could have beat because they got right. violated anyway, right? Right. But now they got a, a, a assault on a police officer. Exactly. All kinds of extra shit. And and every time I've been charged, they laundry list them shit. I said, damn, I did yeah, one you, thing. Oh, you already know that they laundry list them bitches. They, you be like second degree or two, two counts of the same shit because it was two cops there. I thought it was I did four cops there. He said, he said, nigga, it offended. Oh, I'm like, what the fuck? Bruh, like, my, my, listen, the last time, the, the last time I went uh, that, I, that I went to prison, right, and I was fighting this case, I added up all of the years of everything that they gave me, bro. Why I had like, bro, I had at least three, four hundred years worth of time on this bitch. Now, of course, yeah. they don't run them bitches like that. They can, but they don't be yeah, running. They, up, run they run them concurrently. concurrently. They run them together. Right. You feel me? But. Right. I'm looking like at the end of the day, the most years one probably carry was probably like a 30 piece or some shit like that. Uh, I'm looking, I'm looking like, I'm looking like, look, oh shoot. I, I'm looking like, bro, I I don't know what y'all talking about, bro, but it, it'd be like, it's two assaults, four, four of these, three of these. I'm looking like, how do I get two of the same, two counts of one thing? You know what I'm saying? Like, like y'all niggas is really geeking in this bitch, bro. Like yeah. y'all niggas be real live piling it up thick, but that's how they do it though, bro. They give, they give you all them cards like playing Uno, like a motherfucker pile oh, on. God, that shit like playing Uno. <laughs> I know. <laughs> that's that why I be like, playing, like real live when you playing when it's you versus the if it's you versus the state of you versus the yeah. United States government, nigga. That is a game of Uno. Prepare to draw twelve. 13, 15, nigga, you was about to be in it to win it. <laughs> but see, uh, uh, the, but a lot of people fuck up, though. I, I don't know. I'm not going to get a whole course on this shit. But a lot of people fuck up on the initial shit. Like, they can't take the initial intake phase. They they fold up on that. Like, look, if, if, it's, if it's like a stop or something, and it whatever. Like, if you know you good, you good. But, like, See, it's when it be conflict or if, if if you under investigation. So it's different levels of the shit set so that I'm familiar with. Like if it's some random certain shit, some seizure shit, you got a blunt on you or some shit like that, and you in a state where it's illegal, that's you handle it one way. But if you under investigation right. and right. you gotta I mean, handle that shit the whole I ain't even gonna lie. My my last case is probably like the heaviest shit I ever dealt with, you know what I'm saying? As a as uh, a fucking man, I was like I, I, it's like this. I'm on a heavy ass case. It's guns on the case. Is you know, it's shit going on. You feel me? And it, it's it's shit that that niggas like that's pressure. And I'm not gonna lie, bro. I ain't really, I ain't really let them. I ain't really feel the pressure of that shit because I, I felt like, like you said, like I knew what I knew about what I knew. So that was the thing mm-hmm. too. It was like, well, shit. If I hold all the keys to sinking this motherfucking ship. I'm gonna lock that shit and get rid of it, and they ain't getting nothing. I, I'm especially if, if if really this really fall on me, right? Why would I? Why would I sink this bitch? I'm even if I can get out of it by myself, like by not talking. Like I don't. I, I, that's what the point that it got to. It was like, all right, my one Cody, he gonna rat, he gonna rat, he gonna rat. This nigga in the position that he in, and then it's me. It's like it's they. They 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 getting us together, but trying to do it separate and niggas playing it separate for real. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, fuck. I'm just not gonna say nothing and see what they know. Like I just gotta wait this one out. You know what I'm saying? Cause I'm used to going in through like two or three months, get right back out. This time I'm looking like I knew the day they locked me up, I was like, I ain't about to be home for at least a year. <laughs> I already knew it. I was like, cause cause I knew I wasn't gonna say nothing. I was like, it's gonna be at least a year, at least cause I gotta at least get the trial. I say I can probably beat them at trial, but damn, I gotta I gotta get there first. Right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You know it's gonna be eight months before you get the trial. It's gonna take you about two months to get indicted. Then it's gonna be that the speedy trial. You're gonna have six months from the indictment. You know what I'm saying? So you waiting on that. And they not even coming to do nothing. You're gonna do all these pre-trials, they're gonna be postponing this shit, trying to fuck with you up here. Me, I ain't gonna lie. I was just crashing out in the jail. Like I was just doing shit in the jail. I was I was just using the jail like how I would use the streets. You know what I'm saying? I was talking shit to the fucking COs and shit. 
trying to, you know, trying to be a voice of the people that was in it when I could be trying to have control of certain things and make sure shit was, you know, moving a certain way, like shit like that. But other than that, bro, I ain't, I, I'm not one of them people that would give into the pressure. Like now, let's say, let's say God forbid I, I murdered a person and I know I did the shit. That's a whole different ball game of me sweating and trying to figure some shit out. But if somebody pinning a murder on me, I'm gonna be mad as shit, but that's that's certain shit, certain battles I can take with a little patience because I know I'm like, nigga, you did nothing wrong. You know what I'm saying? So only good can come from this. Like a lot of niggas be in this, you know, as soon as the motherfucking handcuffs hit, they be like, man, I'm gonna tell you what this nigga grandmother said. Exactly. That's what I'm saying. saying. They already folded. <laughs> then you set yourself up already. You didn't gave it all up. You can't take the initial, the initial weight. So, you know, you, you, you set yourself up for failure. You can't recover from that. They're going to be trying to use that fucking confession tape uh, two years from now. No, you know for real. So, I mean, I don't, I don't know. I just, my best advice is just don't be around them. Like, when they come, like, this is what I do. If they come, I leave. You know what I mean? Like, especially if it's not an event or something that I'm in complete control of. You know what I mean? Like, if it's any type of way they can see me as the the lesser than. If, now, if I'm running the event, the organizer, or some shit like that, then maybe I stick around. But normally, if they come, I'm out. I'm nah, really sure. I'm going really to deal with them. We'll sort that shit out later. <laughs> like, what happened? what happened when I left? Oh, okay. Shit, that was crazy. You know? Nah, for real. But I sort that shit out later. I ain't got time for them. You know, so it is what it is. I ain't even gonna hold you. That ain't the life. I just choose to make better decisions now because I, I be I already see this shit for what it is, man. Even when it come down to you being wanting to be a solid person and have integrity, the world don't got no rules. You do, and you gotta right. remember that shit. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like, and because of that, because the whole world, the thing that I think that fascinated me, you know, this tie all of it together about uh, Western movies is the lawlessness of how raw, when you see how the America itself was before big government, then you mm-hmm. understand what the whole world was. You know what I'm saying? Right, like, right, we right. Okay. This, we, we wasn't always that civilized. Like I just said, like a Bama can shoot a Bama. Like certain shit would just be going on. Like, uh, one, it'd be one dude in the town. He's the sheriff. He on the board for the housing lots, and he also run the saloon. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm-hmm. and what you think? Now, what like, you think he gonna do? Make sure his fucking family is the wealthiest family in the town. And you, you watch, you watch those shows. It, it'd be the sheriff. Then he got the mill. Then he got the saloon. Then he got the brothel. Then he got the hotel. You know his brother in laws the mayor. Right now, and they running all the cattle and all that shit, you know. Yeah, that's that's what they do. That's and what you judge, that's what you it, supposed to do. And, and then the judge be who? It be anybody that they just elected, you know what I'm saying? Right. They pick. Right, that that but he's indebted to them, so right. So he gonna do he gonna make he gonna make calls based on what, what's gonna benefit the town or or you know, whoever yeah. So that's the same process. And when you when you see that how lawless that the Wild West was, that's what we still living in now, bro. I've been I've been saying in the city, bro, there's been so many shootings and killings. Like, I'm talking about, like, I don't know if it's because I just followed this new page and that's all it report, or if it's just, like, a really an increase in what's going on, bro. Like, man, it's bank robberies and shit. Like, bro, it's, like, looking like 1980 Washington, D.C., like, the fuck going on, bro? When they can start robbing banks, I'm, I'm, but honestly, oh, honestly, I'm gonna say Damn. this: niggas is really spanking banks right now. They is spanking banks. I'm like, hold on, hold on, yeah. I can hold see it. On. That that says a lot. That says a lot about the government, though. I, that don't say nothing about the people. All right? And I don't want nobody to think I was saying that to be tipping or nothing like that. They got a lot to say about the government. It's so bad that the nigga think it. That's the, that, the last. I think that's the first thing a nigga think, but the last thing a nigga want to do. You know what I'm saying? 
Yeah, like when you flat on your ass, the first thing you gonna think is I'm ready to rob a bank. But that's gonna be the last thing you gonna do. Like, I'm not trying to go to jail, and I gotta go through all this just to get the money. Then I might get a dab pack and shit. Like it might be too much. It's a bank that I've been looking at, but <laughs> <laughs> that motherfucker sweet. I be like, all right, I I know just about every tailor in that junk. Know a couple of their cars. I mean, like that jump right by the highway. Hey, you, like, go you got. If I ever hit a motherfucker, it's two. It's two movies that I would hit a bank robbery. Like Inside Man and motherfucking uh bandits with motherfucking uh what's his name? Billy Bob mm-hmm. Thornton. And, uh, what's the other Bruce Willis? I gotta see it. Look, they they, they go and they, they go and uh find out who the bank man is, pull up on the nigga, go like die, fake kidnap the nigga, go to his house and shit the night before, and then walk him in the bank the next day. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I got to do some shit where like I'm gonna be in and out. I know who I'm. I'm a know the who's the security guard. What's his car? What time he get to work? You know what I'm saying? Like, cause it's just people. At the end of the day, it's just people, man. Honestly, the world need a villain like the Joker right now to just set things straight between the rich and the poor. Man, ain't never going <laughs> to be straight. Like, because if you if you ain't got it, you're going to want it. And nah, if you got hey, it, yeah. you going to keep it. Bro, that's crazy. You said that's a shit show, though. You said if you don't got it, you're you going to want it. Yeah. That's exactly. crazy. That's crazy. I don't, but you know what, though? I realized that, bro. I, that's why, I, like, niggas be setting money goals. I be setting money goals because I realized that I just want the financial freedom to do the fuck I want. And I had to, the work, like, you nigga go take a week off of work and then got to come back and work for a month just to, you know, get back on track or stay, or just to help keep a pace. You know what I'm saying? And I be feeling like, bro, I ain't like, bro, to keep living like that, bro. I'm not trying to wait till I'm 50, bro. To be smelling good, traveling good, you know what I'm saying? Like, man, I'm trying to do that shit now. Man, but that that that's why I was just having this conversation literally this morning. I'm like, the system is how they got the system set up. They get it so that you instead of investing yourself early to set yourself up where you don't have to work the rest of your life, they get it where you you spent all your money in your teens and your twenties, and by the time you're in your thirties and forties and you're starting to settle down. You be chasing that for the rest of your life. You don't. Most people don't clear that today in their fifties and sixties. But so that's now, I, well, how many years a go a, a real life you have left instead of getting that shit right in your twenties, early thirties? You know what I'm saying? Then the forties, fifties, sixties, seventy, eighty. The rest of everything is good. But I don't that's know. they they fuck us over in the schools though. Like it'd be crazy. Fuck you over in the schools. No funny though. I think that whenever they change the curriculum to adjust to the, the current industry for the kids, that they should allow free continued education programs for adults and not just the DC ones. I'm talking about like, I well, think that your DC job, better. your job should be like, like, oh, like if you're a cashier and then they get, they teaching them new math in the schools and shit. I think that your job should give you a training course on the new math. I keep hearing about this new math, how it work. I don't know. I don't know new man. I know old man. I don't need. I, listen, I'll go if I want to learn some new math. I'll go on YouTube. But I think that the algorithms that I have for math are going to get me a long way. They're the basic algorithms of one plus one equaling two, and that won't change. You feel me? Right. Like, <laughs> you know, when it come down to me, I ain't no motherfucking. I don't be doing like trigonometry or nothing like that. Like I'm a regular nigga. You feel me? Like I can. I do percentages. Bit. It, shit like that, but you it, know. it it be to the point though. Who is in control of the curriculum? Like who gets to say what is studied in school? And we had definitely had this conversation. The, like well, because like we the, could the, like the money the the industry controls. I think that the industry is where really be controlling the curriculum because like the public school curriculum, of course. That's that's gonna be that's governed by how much money is getting funneled in, and then how much is being skimmed off the top, and then you know all the bullshit that go into 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 that because it ain't just like 
niggas got money for schools and all teachers are just these heartfelt people that want to take care of kids. Now, motherfuckers in this because they know it's an industry that money funnels through and they go and tap in sometimes. But right. but back to, I, you know, them like having shit that be going on, like, it, it's like, bro, if you think about it, bro, we always going to be dumber than our kids and everybody going to always be dumber than their kids. <laughs> Cause the shit that they be teaching that be kind of like shit that's already been knowledge, but it be it be like they be teaching our kids now the, the shit that they made us pay to go to college to learn, because they got some new shit that they they, they make they want to make our kids pay for when it's time to go to college. I don't know, man. I think college. I think by the time your kids are in school, it's not going to be the same. A lot I think of the that, barriers I think that's are going to collapse. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I think I don't think that it's going to be the same as far. I think it may be free high education, like because it because remember they already was talking about paying off everybody's student debt and like but, forgiving all student loans and all of only, this shit. But then that that got two things though, right? Because when if the government take an interest and in, like even though it's something that we would want for the government to take an interest in the education system and to put us in a position to be able to compete with the rest of the world, our government is not a government to be trusted. Like, it, our government ain't a government like China who literally gonna be like, nah, bitch, you going to school, you gonna be a biochemist, and you gonna fucking work for the government. Our government ain't, kind, they like that, but they ain't really like that. They be I, like- I was like, uh, yeah. So our, our government- Our government is- like that, but not, to the sense where they going, they using it for the advancement. Our government, everybody be fake expendable. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like they be getting rid of niggas. They gonna... more. We could uh-huh. be doing more. We could be we could be doing more. But the thing about our government and how it's set up is it's it's so easy to be taken advantage of, and that's what a lot of a lot of people from other countries do they come over here and take advantage of all the welfare systems and like actually take advantage of this shit though like that's the, get all what's, this the shit. Di- what's the difference in, in you being a thousand in here and then you going to mexico you got fifteen hundred dollars here you can't buy shit you go to mexico you can get an acre of land like that'll be that's i mean fuck you it this is the world this this the world Man, land, not that motherfuckers, motherfuckers is going motherfuckers is going to motherfuckers is always going to be rich and they're going to be poor. It's going to be the haves. It's going to be the have nots. You know what I'm saying? Like, I think that the gap, the, the poverty gap, that shit, that shit nuts. Like, I think that rich people should be obliged to pay a lot of taxes and take care of poor people. I ain't going to hold you. No. Like, oh, wow, wow. Mm, I'm not taking I'm care saying, I listen, work too hard, bro. man, to be fucking taking care of these motherfuckers. Listen, bro, because everybody, because you you stand it as a, a person that fight tooth and that we ain't coming from the same streams of revenue that they come. I'm talking about that old money rich people. The motherfucking yeah, but the, old oil burn ass motherfucking blood. But my thing is like I'm not gonna say that because that's where I strive and plan to be. So I'm not gonna set it up where I'm there. I'm I'm, oh, I'm so you going my you, money on. You not going you not about to build off of. of of blood and all of people backs like these motherfuckers did. You gotta it think, don't, right? you don't have to, but you don't we have to at, do that. We we looking at slave dollars in some way, shape, form, or fashion. Our eyes are be or something we touch every day is the result of some shit that a nigga didn't pick, some cotton that a nigga didn't pick in the 1600s. Mm-hmm. It's all connected. I follow. You know what I'm saying? Like that's just what it is. But your money not the same. I don't, I'm not gonna say that your money would be the same result unless you was like, a, you was out here and you killing and 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 robbing and shit to get your bread. But like if you if you making the right decisions and the right moves, nah, you using the system to operate. The system they set up to operate and it's it's legal. Fuck it. Right, but that's my whole thing. Is like once once you get to that level, man, it don't matter if the rules are set up. Whoever got the money to pay, it ain't gonna be like, well, your money dirty and your money clean. Yeah. Like you got the bread, you got to pay. These are facts. It ain't gonna distinguish ain't nothing, right? Right. So we gotta make sure that it's it's the opportunity because I don't. We can't. I don't think we should try to promise people uh equal results we just should promise them equal opportunity 
like a chant. But that's but yeah. you know what? That's the kill though. Yeah. You know what you sound like? You sound like a fucking politician at the end of the day because I, that's what the American dream is. They hold in like the fact that you can possibly one day maybe become at least get you a house with a picket fence. At least you should be able to if you if you really work the system. You should be able to like. If I didn't have no other thing to do, I would do Uber or Postmates or fucking something till I stack enough money, till I have something that I can invest in and make my money start making money and keep doing it, working 40, 80 hours a week, 120 hours a week until I'm stacked up. That's what I would do. But everybody ain't like me. You feel me? Like I'm a do, I'm a work 120 hours and not do nothing else until I, I got to a position where I could do something else. Cause that's what I did. I feel that. I, like it ain't, it ain't if you not working a at least 60 hours a week on something, you ain't but really I, I when I say the poor, I don't mean the unemployed poor. I mean the poor, like the ones that's like oh well, listen. Maybe not pay a tax and give motherfuckers money, but they definitely need to raise the minimum wage. Like, if you work a job that's 40 hours a week, that motherfucker should be able to take care of you. I don't give a fuck if it's McDonald's or fucking Apple. But that's why, and, and, but those rules are the exact reason why a lot of people, like a lot of jobs are going to cap people hours because they're not going to pay the benefit. I, why would I uh, pay you if you work 40 hours, I got to pay you uh, all these benefits, I can just get two people and work out both 20 hours. Man, listen, you ain't. I'm just saying, I'm realizing. saying it like business. I'm like, this the, is I'm from the trenches. Give me my money. I go get Medicaid. Fuck that. It's like, give me my money. Well, I, I don't. My job well, asked I'm me just, that the other I'm day. Like, we, a, we got we got new med, we got new dental and vision. I'm looking at him. I'm like, oh, oh okay. He was like, would that something you'd be interested in? No, I don't need you all me nothing else. I don't need you making no more plays, doing nothing else. Where you gonna have to be spending more money to have an excuse to pay me less? Stop doing shit around here and give me my bread. <laughs> like, pay me with pay me with that way, my nigga. Like, no funny, bro. Like. I, I'm dead ass. I'm off the all that being paid. I don't even believe in that being paid every two weeks should be some illegal shit. Like nigga, it, I'm feeling like JG Wentworth. <laughs> like it's my buddy and I need it now. Fuck that. All that shit be bullshit. I'm like, man, nah, y'all got a hell of a way, huh? <laughs> they got a hell of a way, I'll tell you that. But you gotta like I like I had the similar opinions to like you start looking at it as the business owner, like as the person who's running the establishment and the rules that are in place. Like, and that's purely a reaction for the rule that if the person works full time, you got to give them benefits. If like in most states, if they work full time, you have to offer them benefits. So that's why they were like, well, fuck that. I'll just get two employees and work them half the time. Right. So I don't have to give them benefits. That's I mean, mean. I mean, it's a lot of cost to that. Like, you got to play employee, employer insurance and all these taxes and all this shit. Man, it add up. Don't let the nigga already have pre-existing conditions and shit. Right. Oh. <laughs> I, feel, I understand the business. Like I be telling my boss that all the time. I just don't like where I'm at in the position in the business. I, I tell him that too. Like, listen, understand where I'm at. I don't want you to think that any time when you doing your algorithm that I'm with the shits around here because I'm not with none of this shit. Like, <laughs> I'm not with nothing that don't involve you putting money in my pocket. Like dead ass. I'm not even gonna lie. Like if it don't involve you putting bread in my pocket, don't. I'm not with the shits. And I mean more bread. Like, I don't mean, like, the same amount you've been putting in my pocket. Like, nah, I'm not with none of this shit. So, if it's about making more money, sign me up. Like, my boss would be hitting me with it. Well, do you want more hours? Bruh, no. I want more money. The fuck? <laughs> the fuck out of here. 
No bullshit. But hey, look, I gotta get out here before it looks like it's about to rain. I gotta get out here and change the start on my truck. So I'm gonna uh we're gonna wrap this episode of Hippies and Pancakes up, you know what I'm saying? And I'll see y'all next week, same time, you know, different circumstances. All right. QAZ, All right. I appreciate y'all for y'all time as usual, brothers. And uh yeah, until next time, we out.